Mark, Mark Hunter. Thank you. I got it. Okay, now we're introducing uh, Mark Hunter, a bit of analysis of his speech. Mark's in a wheelchair, and this speech is very much about, about him, and um, great speech. Sink full of green tomatoes. Again, the, 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 the title is unique. Um, it's got that novelty factor, a sink full of green tomatoes. Really well done. Thank you. Literature is literally littered with lively legends. There we go. What our use of alliteration. Bam, straight off the top. Great gestures out here. He moves really fast in his wheelchair. And his arms out here. Yeah, literature is literally littered with lively legends. Bam! What a powerful opening. Powerful opening which ties into the, obviously the theme of his speech. Amongst them rides Don Quixote. The and then he goes, rides Don Quixote, and he moves, rides, and, he, and it's like he's Don Quixote, you know, riding into battle. And of La Mancha, an idealistic knight who fought for the rights of others. Co I loved how he coasted there. He's, I mean, he's really good in his, his wheelchair, Mark, and um, loved how he just coasted there for that, that, that nice bit of riding on the horse. Really clever. And dared to dream the impossible dream. Nice use of a gesture there, dare to dream the impossible dream. Now, if you're understanding that, yeah, the nice gesture there, nice gesture. Madam Contest Chair, ladies and gentlemen, while I dare not sing that famous song for fear it could be your nightmare, nice humor there. I too, like all of us, have dreamed him. Nice gesture there, that's something I've dreamed the arm gestures that wide. Possible dreams. And again, it's a hook to a lovely, you know, micro macro thing. You know, the micro is, this, is his story, and the macro is going back to the bigger picture of Don Don Quixote, and um, and stuff. And um, yeah, so which is a bigger historical thing. People know of the Don Quixote, uh, the Man of La Mancha. Many people in the audience have read the book. It's it's got many years of traction. So immediately he ties his little story in with a bigger picture of that story of Don Quixote. Very clever. To make one of my dreams even remotely reachable. Nice. Reaching out to the dream. Remotely reachable, use of alliteration. I needed to learn a lesson. Perhaps a lesson for us all. Yeah, and again, here we come into the, you know, what speeches are about. It's stories where lessons need to be learned. So the hero needs to learn lessons, yeah? At the age of 22, an accident completely changed nice my view of the again. world. Before the accident, I saw the world from the height of an invincible six feet. Now, use, of, use of height now, so you, again, he's pointing to height. And now he's, again, uh, I just spoke about the book about height. So high, high, medium, and low. And he's, he's immediately reached up to the height, yeah? I see it from the height of a consummate navel gazer. Humor there. So I became short, seated, and recycled. Short, seated, recycled. It's kind of they're kind of rhyming those those words, rhyme alliteration, and recycled. And it, as he says, recycled, he cycles his wheel. Very clever. But I soon faced discrimination. So Again, the side gesture, very cool, discrimination. I became the modern day Don Quixote. Yeah, again, Don Quixote, the hook into that again. And I, and I love his aplomb and uh, pluck in that statement. Fighting for the rights of those with a disability. Many, many times I would put on the armor of righteousness, mount my trusty gray horse. Yeehaw! <laughs> so good there. So he mimes putting on the armor of righteousness, his gray horse, which is obviously the wheelchair, and he does the yeehaw. Yeehaw, great use of sound. Uh, on a, on a monopia kind of stuff. Yeah. Anyway, um, great use of a sound there, uh, which which ties back to the cowboys in, in the Wild West. <laughs> really, really cool. And he keeps a straight face. Lower my life. There he's won the speech. He's won the speech from the speech competition from that moment onwards. So we're so we're two minutes in, one minute about one minute thirty in, and he's and he's won simply because how awesome he is right here. Yeah, I reckon.
and charge into hell for my heavenly cause. Yeah, and he charges on his wheelchair and moving, moving, and then he uses the, you know, as if he's holding that, you know, that that uh, that pole, that knight's, that star, what is it, that, um, you know, where knights charge with that um, big, big, what is it, post, and, you know, really clever. The knight on, the, on his horse. Daring to dream of a world Again, where discrimination no longer existed. Again, he ties back into a universal theme of discrimination. At other times, I would retreat, exhausted, and just want to become invisible. No, I see that, and it's just the slow plot moving backwards. So he's actually mentally moving, like physically moving backwards, but showing that retreat into himself, and then hunching over, look at his body language. Even being in the wheelchair, you can see the body language, and he deliberately puts it on the side so we can see... And everyone can identify with that when they're sad or down, you know, that curvature of the spine and feeling down, looking at the looking at the looking at the toes. Really well done. Nice contrast between the bravado of Don Quixote and that and then to the to the, the hunched over. For many years as I championed this cause, I faced this dilemma. Do I want to fit in? Or do I want to stand up, stand out, and stand fast for who and what I've become? Stand up, stand up, out, and stand fast. A nice repetition of the word stand, 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 and notice he can't stand. Uh, but stand up, stand out, stand fast. A nice repetition of those words. Up, out, fast. Do I want to be the same or different? The same, nice gesture down here, low, and different, a nice punchy, punchy gesture up there. I became consumed by this problem and desperate for an answer. So I turned to books, coaches, meditation, you name it, I did it. I even searched in the bottom of a couple of empty bottles of scotch. <laughs> about nice ten years about after scotch. the accident, I found my answer where many of life's most important questions are answered. Yep, now here we come to, he's the hero, he's lost. And now he's encountering his, he's sought the answers, but now he's encountered the major, the major relationship and the major mentor in this speech. My grandmother's kitchen was filled with the aroma of freshly cooked bread. And the quiet, rhythmic chopping of vegetables was the only sound to be heard. Wow, 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 wow. Did you see that bit? The quiet, rhythmic chopping the gestures go vegetables with the only sound to be heard so we've got the sound yeah and we've got the smell we've got the smell of the freshly baked bread in his grandmother's kitchen the sound of the chopping of vegetables on the bench, use of senses gleaming great. upturned jars were just begging to be filled with a world famous tomato relish gleaming upturned jars and he held the jar in his hand there's that beautiful you know you can see you can picture the you can picture the kitchen you can picture his grandmother and everyone's got a grandmother. So everyone can immediately identify with that key relationship. I thought it was world famous. My grandfather, Poppy, used to say it could be used as paint stripper. <laughs> I too would laugh at his mischief, but Nana would merely smile. A splash was followed by her silent invitation to look in the water-filled sink. One, one... The word splash is a nice little sound effect as well bright red apple had accidentally tumbled in and was now bobbing amongst a dozen green tomatoes. Nice use of his hands bobbing. He's just so great, this guy. Mark, well done, Mark. Right, just notice that gesture there, so that bobbing. She said to me, Mark, look in the sink. What do you want to be? I looked at my choice. Do I want to be the one apple or one tomato of many? And I remembered thinking... Again, he's, he's in now. This is an archetype, the thinker's pose. Really, 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 really clever use of body language. So again, it's the, the hunch that he had before, but it's in that thinker. I think it's a Rodin statue, um, the thinker. And I'm, I'm sure you can identify with that. You know, if you Google thinking statue, you'll come up with that. Great archetype there. Who looks at fruit and vegetables and gets philosophical? <laughs> Nice humorous moment there. Nice rhetorical question. So how did I answer Nana? As I watched her, I finally understood her wisdom. Nana... Nice shift in emotion. He's gone from pensive and thoughtful. 
Now he's back into energetic and thinking a nice shift. And he takes the audience with him with his, with his gestures and with his facial expression. Said she stopped, turned, waited. Nana, I want to be. I so want to be. The water. Oh, nice. <laughs> Very clever. See, you know, the obvious thought is, you know, the, the red apple bobbing in the sea of green tomatoes. And you're probably, I do, you know, you're probably thinking he wants to be the red tomato, the red apple. But here's the interesting twist on that. See, he leads the audience to think he wants, he's going to say, I want to be the green, the red apple. But now he's saying, no, I want to be the water. And notice how he just calms and his arms go out, the water. She turned back to her work and I'm sure I heard her smile. She knew I had found my answer, that you can't change the world by charging around like an idealistic knight. No. Again, again, he's charging again with that, charging into battle again. You've got to change it from in here Ooh, nice by statement. being the water. Wow. Change it from in here by being the water. Nice. A nice gesture to his heart. And, he's, and look at the intensity of that gaze to the audience. You see, water embraces everything completely. It doesn't differentiate young from old, black from white, tall from male gazes. It's simply encompassed. Nice use of gestures up, down, tall, you have other male gazes, yeah. Is all. And yeah, it's a bigger metaphor, that idea of water. Um, nice use of the, the meat metaphor of water. This water, if it is not a unique definition of love, Ooh, now he's, now he's going to another level. He's taking it up to a higher level of love. He's relating water to love. Mission supported by Deepak Chopra when he says, for love to be real, it has to flow out and around that which is love. Wow. Now he's used a quote there. Now again, having a quote in your speech is very powerful. So he's used, you know, obviously he's quoted the name of the person, Deepak Chopra, and the quote, and his arms has gone out again with that, that same powerful gesture, which is like an anchor. Uh, repeating that same gesture and connecting people to to the emotions, the higher emotions from the beginning of his speech. Uh, great use of quote. Very powerful use of quote in his speech. This water is liquid love. Liquid love. Notice, notice the change in pace of his speech and just the softer liquid love. And there's a use of alliteration as well. I am the water. I am the water. No. Personification, is it? I am the water. When we are the water, the need to fight the good fight. Again, now he's bringing it out to the audience. I, if I say it's I am the water, now it's we are the water. No longer exists. Yeah. The Contrast with fight the good fight, and then no longer exists. Yeah, that easing into life. To work out whether we're the same or different, no longer exists. Nice, nice repetition of gestures here. It's bam, strong gesture, and then softly release down. Bam, strong gesture, and then softly release down. When we love with the intimacy of water, again that same gesture. Difference sorry. doesn't exist. Going into the beautiful, beautiful message. It's what this liquid love. Liquid does. love does. Nice alliteration. Beautiful message. And so, with my new understanding, I began to change that same my gesture. world. Changing the world from in here. Going back in. Double hand gesture to the heart. Nice. Ladies and gentlemen, in an ordinary kitchen. I learnt an extraordinary lesson, one which enabled me to take off my armour and get off my horse, not literally. <laughs> I learnt from my grandmother that it doesn't matter how we're nice different, gesture. what matters is how we love. So two very key, he's got a lot of nice gestures in there, but two very key ones are that big, strong side, you know, arms out to the side gesture, and then the hand to the heart gesture. And so this morning, I leave you with her wisdom that in a sink full of green tomatoes and one wildly bright red apple, there is so much, so much to be gained from being the water. Nice take-home message. Madam Chairman. Wow. And, it, and notice, notice at the last bit of the speech, it's, it's convicting, it's driving the message home, and he, and he almost brings it down to a, a stage whisper. Very powerful, nice contrast, and, and I know that he's won this. You know he's won. Great speech. <laughs> I 
and, and these speeches, they definitely go to another level. They go to a, take on a life of their own. Well done, Mark Hunter, for doing that. I hope you like my analysis. And uh, yeah, please get in touch with Mark Hunter. He's a consultant, coach, um, trainer, and uh, you can find him on, just Google his name, Mark Hunter Speaker.